Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, working with you to make your game nights better. Now today, what I want to do for you is let you know about this game. This is Mind Your Business, or this is Mind Your Business. Actually, they're both Mind Your Business, to get the right way, one of these ways they, they go together. This is Mind Your Business, a spatial game from... no. Envy Born Games, sorry, from Envy Born Games that we got to check out at Origins Game Fair 2023. I did a quick demo at their booth and was impressed by the game, asked them if they wanted help promoting their game, and they offered me to take a review copy of the game. Now, one thing you will note is I have two copies of the game. Well, that is because there are different pieces. There is a two-player game with one copy, which comes with two characters. Or it's a four-player game if you own both. And I run a lot more four-player games than two-player games, so I got both copies. So I'm going to open up both of these. Um, what they do come with is you can play three to four players with both boxes. The gameplay, though, is identical otherwise. But I figure why not open them up both at once? So again, thank you, NV Born Games, for letting me take a copy of this Home from Origins. I'm really looking forward to bringing this one out to public play events. Uh, it does some neat things that I am looking forward to do. That said, this is not a teach in any way. I've not played Mind Your Business. I sat through a short demo at Origins and was sold on the core concept of the game. So please don't take this as instructional. If I do say something wrong in this video, I do apologize. I have not even read the rules for this book, so, <laughs> this game. The main reason I'm here today though, is to show off the components to give you an idea of what you get in the box if, and if it's worth the value of the cost. So we're gonna start by cutting the shrink. I'm gonna do that off camera, and then I'm gonna open up both copies of Mind Your Business. All right, here you have my copies of Mind Your Business. Now again, this is uh, a game that plays two player with one box or two player with a different box, or you can put them together to play up to four players. Now, one of the cool things about this game is you can also play solo and competitively or cooperatively. So I thought that was pretty neat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just push this version off to the side for now and focus on this. And then I'll show you what's different in the other copy. So here we have the box, a nice small box and look quick at the box sides and a look at the box back that kind of gives you a quick overview of play. Now, I've never opened one of these. I've only actually seen the game at Origins during a demo. That is wow. For what I know of the game, that is a surprisingly thick box. Or box, sorry, uh, rule book. So we have a list of the game components with your two different gnomes, your various cards, and your goblin, which I've got to say it's the most unique goblin I've ever seen. I'll get to that in a minute. We're looking at 30 pages. This, okay, the demo did not make the game seem that complicated. Um, okay, so nice big font, single column. That makes a little bit more sense. Showing the various state rules, what you can do, what you can do with the various tiles, how you can play through the game. Uh, I don't know what read the sign is, but again, this is not a teach. Rulebook looks very clear. Okay, that makes more sense. Ending the game, page 11. Okay, so then it's a bunch of... Okay, so there's variants. That makes way more sense. Okay. That much of the rule book is like variants and stuff. That much is rules. That fits better what I was expecting. So there's a resource scaring variant here. There are rules for solo play. Um, there are event card effects. Uh, chapter two is the Goblin, the Goblin, which is I did not see the Goblin. The Goblin's a surprise to me, actually. The Goblin was not part of the game when I played, when I, when I saw it. That goes on for, and then Gnome Orc Tears, two-player cooperative play, various Goblin setups. So yeah, rules for three to four players, which again, you do need both copies of the game to do that. One to four player co-op. So yeah, okay, 11 page rule book for the basic rules, but then all kinds of cool variants to play at different player counts, cooperative or not. That makes way more sense than when I first opened this was like, whoa, that's a big box. All right, check out these. I thought these were awesome. Though it's the strangest goblin I've ever seen. So gnomes. We have a purple gnome. And what I like is the art's actually different. Like the gnome has a face on this side and you have the back of the gnome on that side. And a unique, different one. And in nice, colorblind, friendly colors, from my understanding. I do not have vision issues myself. From what I understand, the purple and orange is, say, way better than red and green. Then, the most unique goblin. That is the goblin. I've never seen a goblin that looks like that. It looks like a slug or a lizard. But fair enough. Unique fantasy settings. It's always nice when people mix it up. The goblin's huge, too. Then we're going to get into lots and lots of cards. 
because this is a card game. I'm already impressed by this insert. There's a nice insert here to hold the square cards. Uh, interesting, there was a conversation on X the other day talking about games that use square cards. Toss mine your business onto that list. Nice plastic insert, dividers. Uh, cards seem to be split into the map cards, I guess we'll call them. Looks like there's a summary card. I am going to get the shrink off on these. Oh, there's a nice, okay. There's a really nice map finish on these cards. Really nice. That, that's pleasurable. To touch. I'm so used to cards being like glossy and slightly slippery. Now, to be fair, maybe this is lower quality. This is an independently published game. Uh, it may have been on Kickstarter. I don't actually know at this point. All right, here we have both types of cards out of the shrink. All right, these are various, the emergency break. Um, again, I, I like this finish. Okay, let's see if I can do this by card back. Might actually help. So a rule summary that shows the goblin actions and on this side, the solo or cooperative. An ore card, this looks like a mine cart. Couple of exclamation marks. Another ore card. Yeah, these ones I'm gonna have to read the rules. Key. Oh, here's your on your turn, what to do. Shows the various actions you can take. So there's a summary. These are sorted odd and I think it's just probably from whoever the printer was. So I'm going to try to split these by card back. Those are definitely ore. Wow, that is dark. I realize it's just the back of a card, but that that's some dark artwork on the back of that card. Some ore. I don't know what that is. It's a different mine cart. Sort these. More food, it looks like. Oh yeah, now that I've got those sorted, we'll flip them over quick. So these both just say teleportation. And they show dark back. These are various minecarts facing different directions. One's orange, one's purple, so I assume it's one for each player. These are a bunch of different ore cards, which I think set the value of the various ores in the game. So you have a bunch of those. I know what's nice is like the art on the back is very bland. The art on the front, nice and bright, so that's good. I notice these do have a symbol. Some of these, sorry, have a symbol showing which set they're from up in the corner here. So the one I've opened so far is a pickaxe, uh, a couple lunchtime cards. And then these look like some type of event cards. Yeah, sinkholes, failed breaks, carbon monoxide, cave-ins, and so on. And then rule summaries, and then emergency break cards. So what we have here are the cards that are going to map up your, your map, your, your, I guess, dungeon, your mine. And the whole point of this game is that you are going to manipulate these cards on your turn, turn this so the gold flows to your mine car, which is over here somewhere. Again, this is not meant to be a rule teach, but your mine car's here and the gold flows from one edge right to your mine car, you would get points. And what looks really neat about this game is it's all about spatial reasoning and trying to turn things and move things and you can swap cards and so on to try to make those paths. The campfires mean something. I don't remember exactly what at this point, but that is all your different mine cards. And then there's all kinds of stuff here. that's like swap to adjacent. And then there's a load your cart. Jump to the camp, jump to camp or corner. There's startings of loads, move twice. So yeah, the, the neat part in this game looks like it's building these paths. And I thought it looked like a very good gateway style game that would be approachable for kids and adults, but also fun for um, hobby board gamers. I think would dig this one too. So again, these all have their own symbols. So I'm, I'm not, there might be more different between these two sets than I thought. So this is the, the like pickaxe version. 
of mind your business. I'm going to keep these cards separate. I'm going to pack this version up and we'll grab the other copy in a second. So this is the one with this particular cover with the purple gnome digging through the, the gems. So here is the other version with the female gnome. With its rule book, which actually has a unique, um, this all looks the same, but I think it's showing the, the playing pieces from this piece. So they did change that up. There was a list of the event cards. The rule book should be identical um, to the other one. And different pieces. So we now have a green gnome, sorry, a light blue and a yellow gnome and a green goblin. Again, unique goblin. These should all be the same. These look to be the same as well. I'm going to do a quick look inside. So they do have a different symbol, which makes me wonder if there's something different, but it looks like it's all the same resources. It looks like you've got gems, you've got gold, and you've got whatever this black. I am not sure if there are any differences. That'll be something I'll have to find out. And I'll let you know if when I finally publish a review of this game. What I want to confirm is that the gems look the same as the gems in the other set. So we're going to grab this. Yeah, that's the same card. You can kind of see it there. So there you have what you get with Mind Your Business from NV Born Games. All right, looking forward to checking these out, though really you only have to check one out. Again, Mind Your Business, NV Born Games, got to try this at Origins, looked really cool. I like the spatial reasoning. Um, you've got a grid of cards that have all kinds of mind paths on them, and you're trying to get those to line up so that they head to your cart to be able to trade them in for points. It looked like a nice, pretty simple, quick to play game, looked easy to teach. I think it's going to be very accessible. And the main reason I personally wanted to check this one out is I think it's going to be great for public play events. And I host local events here in Windsor, Ontario um, on weekends. And I think this is going to be a great one, very approachable game, great for family friendly game nights. But I think there's enough depth here that even um, hardcore gamers are going to enjoy this as well. So that was my look at Mind Your Business. Now, when I do get this played, hopefully as early as next Saturday. I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on social media where you can find me everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop One Word. Eventually, I'll write up a review on the Tabletop Bellhop blog, which we'll then talk about on the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. And you'll be able to find a video version of it, video on demand on YouTube eventually, because we put out all of our content in three formats. So if you want to watch it, listen to it, or read it, you can learn about mind your business but first i gotta get the game played and while i can't get it played if i'm sitting here recording videos unboxing stuff now that it's open it's time to read the rule book and get this to the table so thank you for joining me for this unboxing video uh one thing before you go if you enjoyed this video please i invite you to tip your bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop good day and game on <laughs>